And good evening, everyone. We've got some breaking news in the world of boxing. The trilogy between Alabama native Deontay Wilder and WBC heavyweight champ Tyson Fury has been postponed. Fury testing positive for COVID-19 this afternoon. The match was originally scheduled to take place in Las Vegas on July the 24th. After a split decision in 2018, Fury beat Wilder in February of 2020 by way of TKO to win the heavyweight title. That fight is the only loss of Wilder's career while Fury remains undefeated. Defeated. Man, I was really looking forward to that third fight. Now we'll just have to sit back and wait when they can reschedule it. Now, every summer, the Boys and Girls Club of North Alabama usually puts on a grand event that's commonly known as the Leaders and Legends Banquet. Through the years, Gene Stahl, Evander Holyfield, and Emma Smith have been guest speakers. Well, this year, the organization took things up a notch and went prime time. Pro Football Hall of Famer Deion Sanders was this year's special guest and keynote speaker. Now, Sanders is the only athlete to play in both the Super Bowl and World Series. Series. He says that he always values the opportunity to encourage today's younger generation and attending an event like this is really special to him because he is a product of the Boys and Girls Club. Well, oftentimes the children don't get an opportunity to meet um, someone significant to get to touch them, to feel them, to hear them, and to connect with them. And that's not so far removed from them that they say, I can do that. I could do that. It ain't nothing special about me. I work my butt off. I come from a single parent home. Father was a drug addict, father was an alcoholic, but I made it. I didn't let those necessities or those pitfalls discourage me or distract me. Now this year, Sanders has been making headlines for his role as a head football coach at Jackson State. Recently hosted a prospect camp that was well attended, and his list of recruits and signees has been superb. Coach Sanders uh, wouldn't comment about the camp or the recruits, but he did recognize that he's in the city of Huntsville, Alabama, where Division 4 and current SWAC and HBCU national champ Alabama A&M resides. He shared his thoughts about getting JSU to a championship level like A&M. I can't wait to see what we display in our first game. We got a while before we come here and play, but they're the model of the swag. They're the model of HBCUs. So I'm happy and elated that we could even get on the field with them. Former Crimson Tide star and current Eagles wide receiver Devontae Smith tore opposing defenses on a weekly basis while leading Alabama to a national title. Well, this week he was honored by the Southeastern Conference. Smith was selected as the winner of the Roy Kramer Male Athlete of the Year Award. The honor is given to the best athlete in the Southeastern Conference no matter what the sport. Smith won just about every national offensive award that he was up for and he capped off his team's run to the national title with a Heisman Trophy. The Eagles a wide receiver holds the SEC and school record for receiving touchdowns and receiving yards. Speaking of receivers, Auburn is adding a speedy wide out from a rival school. Today, Georgia wide receiver Demetrius Robertson announced his intentions to go to the Plains. During his time in Athens, he caught 42 passes for 433 yards and scored a few touchdowns. Robertson's commitment adds experience to an Auburn wide receiver core that lacks it due to attrition. The Rocket City Trash Band is trying to snag their first win in their series against the Montgomery Biscuits. I got your highlights coming up after the sports media timeout. Sports first. You're watching WZDX Sports. Welcome back, everyone. The Rocket City Trash Pandas haven't been winning games. In fact, they've lost nine of their last 11. It seems as though this home stress was just what the doctor ordered after a two-week road trip in Tennessee, but the Trash Pandas dropping their first two contests against I-65 rival Montgomery. Now, the Trash Pandas, they were looking for a joke, perhaps, in the form of a slingshot, as you see this right here. Traveling, uh, excuse me, trailing one to nothing in the first. Luis Avalesa Jr. catapults one deep in the right field. Guess what? It is over the fence. He has had the Biscuits number this week. He goes deep and he ties the ball game up at one apiece between the Rocket City Trash Pandas and the Montgomery Biscuits. Now, Izzy Wilson coming through later on, demolishing the first pitch he sees in the bottom of the fourth. A two-run homer, his 14th bomb of the season that puts the Trash Pandas on top, 3-1. to one. The scoring continuing in that inning for the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Another home run, this one from Abadell Isabel, and it is out out of sight, 471 feet. We'll have to check that, but that's still a long way. 4-1 Trash Pandas in the fourth. Let's take a look at the scoreboard, though, everyone. Montgomery would tie it up in the fourth, 
and, excuse me, at four. And in the bottom of the night is Luis Avales Jr. coming through with a three run walk off homer in the ninth to snap the Trash Pandas losing streak. They go on to win by final of seven to four. Of course, the series will continue tomorrow with first pitch at 635 at Toyota Field. So, Sydney, it's good to see the Trash Pandas finally get a victory walk off style. And you know, yes. one of the best things about sporting events, Jordan of I and I have been seeing to do this is enjoying the food. Oh, so, yeah. I got to ask you, what is some of your favorite foods to get at a sporting event like baseball? I'm more of a of a pizza girl for sure. Okay. But you know, you and I, we actually tried some of the food at the Trash Pandas game before. And I and I had the dumpster wrap. And it was heavy. Let me tell you, they literally pack everything into that. But it was tasty, I have to say. It is definitely worth the money.